Welcome to Love Light, the only podcast dedicated to bright, fine art photography. Hosted by Sarah Jane Ethan, Love Light is here to celebrate all things bright, pretty and pastel. At Love Light, white is the new black and beauty is in the detail. This is your place to relax, a place to belong, a place to be inspired and connect with like-minded colleagues who share your passion for light and beauty. So come and introduce yourself in the Love Light Facebook group and subscribe to the Love Light YouTube, podcast and Instagram for your weekly dose of inspiration and connect with bright, fine art photographers from around the world. Well, hello and welcome to our very first episode of the Love Light podcast. I am very excited because my guest today is Helen, and Helen is an amazing photographer. She lives in Wales, which explains why I swoon over every picture that she posts because it's got amazing mountains and scenery and she um, has been a photographer. We actually started when she was 16 years old, has had her wedding photography business for seven years and has just celebrated five years full time. Her work is amazing. And if you would like the chance to create pictures like she does in the amazing landscape of Wales, she is co-hosting her first workshop next year in Wales. So that is definitely going to be a must workshop to get to. So welcome, Helen. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me to your new podcast. <laughs> ah, you're so welcome. I really <laughs> wanted to start with you because Helen has been a, a member of Love Light for oh, a year or more. Mm-hmm. And every time Helen posts her pictures in the, the Love Light Facebook group, there's always a big, everyone just goes oh. crazy because they're always <laughs> stunning pictures. You have such an eye um, for style and the way you, I, 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 I would actually love to know how you direct people because the way that you pose people looks incredibly elegant but very natural and you know I work in a totally different way I get people moving and laughing and and in and so I look at your pictures I think I have no idea how you do that and I try and it just it just looks very awkward <laughs> no gosh no your work so, is tell us a little also. bit about your photography journey how did you get into photography and how did you end up shooting the way that you do Right. Well, it's a pretty long story. <laughs> I like long stories. We've got all the time in the world. <laughs> I can't say it's very exciting, but um, so I, like like you stated, I started when I was around 16 and that was just experimenting with um, my dad's DSLR, actually. Um, when So he he hikes a lot. He's, he loves walking. We're in North Wales and right on the doorstep of Snowdonia. Oh, man. Um, which is incredible and it's so amazing to have this landscape right on your doorstep um so my dad hikes a lot and he had a dslr now dslrs were kind of a new thing back then um so i was really excited to play around with that i was taking a very pretty pictures of flowers and landscapes that kind of thing amazing um I think we all kind of start there right yeah I did as well I did I had a little like point and shoot camera and that's literally the first thing I was taking pictures of was flowers and like sure. just getting right in on the petals that's and, like, <laughs> and, the, exactly. and on the Christmas tree on Christmas tree decorations <laughs> and yeah maybe that's how everyone starts out it's definitely how me and you started out <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we just experimenting with that. Taking lots of self portraits as well, actually, at the time. Ah, um, interesting. Yeah. So you know, um, experimenting with like makeup and hair and stuff, and just really yeah. like wacky, actually. Oh, I love um, it. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Quite um, liberating way. What was the wackiest self portrait you ever took of yourself oh, when you were goodness. experimenting um, with your hair and your makeup? And <laughs> <laughs> I want to picture it. I want to see it in my head. What did you um, look like? <laughs> So way back when I was doing my A-levels, I did dye my hair. Um, I had very peroxide blonde hair on the top. Oh, really? Very bright red. I mean, red, red hair on the bottom. It was my rock chick phase for sure. I love it. (laughs) Um, And I then got, you know, this piercing here. Yeah, yeah. So that was like my rebel stage. Um, So I took a few portraits with that and being really wacky with the colours and everything. Um, since I have toned down my looks <laughs> so um yeah that's probably one of the most wacky kind of images I did like a series with my hair everywhere and you know, makeup and eyeliner and it was all going on but you never know where the boundaries are until you push them <laughs> exactly exactly so um that was a fun phase of my life I have to I say love it. I love it um so yeah experimenting with that and then I started posting on Flickr yeah. So Flickr was the, you know, the big, um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was where everybody was posting photos. We didn't really have Instagram no. back then. We only had Flickr, Facebook, but Facebook wasn't what, what it is now either. So um, that was great because I was posting my images 
but I was also getting great feedback um, on my work as well. Um, I'm just getting this community together um, and I was seeing work from all over the world not just people you know down the road with you know whatever yes. was literally seeing people in America Australia you know everywhere taking amazing yeah. photos um, and at this point I hadn't really um, you know done any portraits except for self-portraits <clears throat> so I was so interested in the photography side um, I did my A-levels in uh film studies and media studies oh interesting yeah also French and music but the media studies and the film oh. studies kind of uh, you know kind of took over from those subjects right. yeah um which is so interesting especially film I love film yeah. I love film theory um and you I think that's where you really developed your love for film because I know sure. you shoot film for now sure. don't you yeah definitely um I always wanted to know how the colours were developed, how the lighting was used to create a mood, how direction of the subjects would, you know, change a story. Um, Always interested in what you can fit in a frame and what you can convey through a frame as well. So really learning about that then and uh, film studies A level was like the best subject I could have, you know, studied. It was incredible. (laughs) Um, so after that, I went to, I, I just wanted to follow that route really. So I went to do a degree in photography and film. Right. And throughout that stage, I was actually doing fashion photography. That was my main um, subject in university. Right. So um, I got fun. Fashion photography, when oh. you're just doing it for, to be creative and fun, is a <laughs> Absolutely. lot. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. So much fun. And that, you know, Lisa creativity was amazing. Um, and it was so, so nice. It was a, it was a, a very, um, yeah, I had a lot of freedom in my degree in a way where we were given the subject, but then I was able to interpret it in my own way. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first portrait shoot I ever did, I took a friend of mine who just lives down the road. Um, and in Bala here where I live, we have this beautiful lake and there's a mountain at the end. And it's oh, just very- so jealous. Stop making me jealous. gorgeous. <laughs> It is so, so beautiful. And I knew that I wanted to do my first, you know, official portrait shoot of a model um, by the lake here. So we just took like a massive bag of clothes, um, told her, just chuck them on. Um, And I remember she had this gorgeous red dress, which was just juxtaposed so beautifully against this very raw um, landscape. So um yeah from from there I just loved directing the model yes. creating mood through expression um finding how the body works what looks good interesting on the body mm-hmm. yeah so really figuring that out quite soon in a way not yes. just snapping away taking photos of people and that's it but actually stepping in and giving direction to create mm-hmm. an image rather than just taking a picture you're creating a picture so good that explains so much of what I see in your work you know that that's oh. your backstory <laughs> that's how you started seeing creatively that's it. It's how sure. you could how you could move this model and how you could direct her yes. to get the absolute best out mm-hmm. of her so Absolutely. good yeah and I was so inspired by photographers you know like Tim Walker Paolo Reversi um you know Stephen Meisel who are just these amazing uh fashion photographers who shoot for Vogue and and everything and the way they just you know can create these beautiful colors and um direct in a very different way and create feeling through the subject rather than just the setting yeah just fuse them together I'm so interested in that so 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 interesting. interesting yeah and so what were what were you discovering is your techniques then to get the the pictures that you're like yes that's the one I want <laughs> you know what were you noticing about how to direct your models and sure I mean I think the main thing is that your subject is always comfortable no matter yeah. what you're doing yeah. um awkwardness comes out in a photo immediately oh and yeah it just you know strikes you totally. um yeah totally so there's a um it's a duty of mine to mm-hmm you know, calm the subject, make them feel great, um, make them feel confident in their bodies um, yeah. and their expressions. And I learned that quite early on, really, um, just by using, you know, a wealth of different people. Because from the start, it was all my friends who were my models yeah. to start with, yes. um, which is a great place to start because you it can really- be a bit more open and tell them exactly what to do. <laughs> yes, yes. You can make your mistakes, learn your lessons, experiment. Yeah. 
totally and knowing you know with body shape and and everybody's body is different so um by using a wealth of different people um I was able to figure out right what looks good on on this person you know and Mm -hmm. and and knowing uh, what makes someone feel good as well because yes in my photos I want people to radiate their happiness and just radiate their joy so that um, really shows in your pictures everyone oh, looks very you. relaxed and but, but also at their most elegant best as well so oh, you really you. achieve it what you set out to achieve you definitely do <laughs> <Thank> you so much <laughs> So how did you get into wedding photography? Because that's, is that the bulk of your work now is wedding photography? It is, or, yeah, yeah, wedding photography. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just flat out through summer. Um, so, um, so to be honest, so I was also doing the, the fashion photography in university and I'd been a bit of a snob. I was saying, oh my goodness, no way am I going to be a wedding photographer. No, Hello. That's too stressful. That's too much work. It's all naff. Everybody stands in a line and that's boring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'd kind of had this prejudice, I guess. Yeah, from discounted whenever. it, like not doing that. Yeah. No, just not doing it, dead on. Yeah, um, because what I was so used to was seeing very stiff poses, very formal wedding photography, um, no young women being um, wedding photographers. Yeah. Um, that's what I had in my head. Um, so when I graduated, so I grand- graduated in 2012, Right. A friend of mine locally here um, said, I love your photos. I love everything you do. Um, Will you photograph our wedding? And I was a bit, oh, my goodness, someone's right. This is happening. Someone asked me to do their wedding. It was the first person who asked me. Um, And I said yes, because I knew them and I wanted to do, you know, a good job for them because they're very sweet people. Um, So I turned up and did the wedding. And honestly, it was just this you know, I did a massive flip in my uh, view of weddings. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, wow, I can be this outsider looking in on this really beautiful day. Yeah. The fashion photography element is still there because I'm still using beautiful dresses and wonderful yeah. suits and using the landscape because they knew I liked fusing, you know, people with yeah. the landscape. Yeah. Um, they were getting married right at the foot of the, the mountain here in Bauer. Yeah. So it was perfect. I could use my expertise in that area and apply it to my um, wedding photography and also enjoying capturing the candid moments, of course, as well. So the more relaxed moments. And um, it, it's nice to be this person who creates a record for people. Yes. Um, you're giving them something to keep forever. And I think that's really special. Wow. Um, so yeah, I know it sounds cliche, but yeah, that's totally, I just fell in love with weddings from that point on, really. Oh, so, totally. No, I get it. Because I, I went to my mm-hmm. first wedding with Matt, because Matt was already doing wedding photography. So right. he took me along as his assistant and mm-hmm. I didn't expect to love it. It oh. just made sense. He had more work than he could do. And it just made, I had a business of my own, but it required clients to come to the house and we wanted to buy our first okay. house and it restricted. So we just made sense. Like, oh, I'll just come and learn how to do photography too. Then I went to that first <laughs> wedding. And I was like, oh, I love this. Like, oh, it was just, sure. Everyone's happy. Everyone's having a great day and, mm-hmm. and I get to be a part of it and everyone's smiling and I like to smile. And yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah which is, I... I it's a, I don't think there's any other time in a person's life like this where all these people come together to celebrate them and they're that's just it. radiating it. They just like feel on top of the world and that's very Absolutely. easy. To go <laughs> it is, it is, it totally yeah. is. And you know, you come home from a wedding kind of buzzing because yeah. everything's been so happy. <laughs> oh, I had one so. wedding where they were particularly lovely people because I don't actually meet my clients before the wedding. So I often meet them for the first time on the morning of the oh, wedding. Okay, it's very yeah, unusual. Sure. Yeah, very mm-hmm. unusual. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't meet the groom until I walked down the aisle and shook his hand before oh, she arrived and said like, sure. hi. And so, you know, I never know quite what I'm going to expect, but my personality, I don't, I don't really mind that. Because, you? Sure. you know, whereas like Matt, he would always, he would always Skype with people beforehand because that just worked for him. He liked to know what to expect, but I kind yes. of don't mind really flying by the seat of my pants. So, yeah. um, so I went Easy. up and yeah, sure. shook this guy's hand and he was so lovely. And he was like, we've been so excited to have you here, SJ. We can't wait to see the pictures. Uh-huh. I mean, when the groom is saying that to you on a wedding day you know it's going to be a good wedding day. absolutely and absolutely. they were so lovely and it was absolutely my ideal wedding and it was literally down the road it was a venue nearby but I loved oh, that venue nice. it was an old Victorian orangery and it was full of glass and full of light and they were lovely people and I was so happy at the end of the day I was driving 
home and I was going thank you God for my job I love my job I'm so happy and then I realized I'd driven 15 minutes in the wrong direction because I, so <laughs> I was so happy and I had to turn around and drive back <laughs> so no I totally get that I'm just buzzing after a wedding day yes. I feel mm-hmm. like death the day after a wedding. I'm oh, like, absolutely. So... Wedding hangover. <laughs> yeah, headache. So heavy. For sure. But after the wedding itself, I feel like I can take on the world. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. So no, that was the start agree. of your wedding journey then. So doing that first wedding, you were like, yes. So was that fashion photography gone? You just focused on weddings or did you do them side by side for a while? Um, side by side for a while. So um, after university as well, it's kind of that pressure, you know, oh, dear I need to make money now <laughs> like yes. I'm in the real world now yeah. um so but to do fashion photography you know efficiently and to be well at it you need to be in studios in you know in a big city so Manchester London wherever yes. um and really I didn't want to leave Wales you know right. it's such a gorgeous community to be in Mm. uh I didn't want to be doing that I'm such a country bumpkin I don't I love it do well in cities anyway so um I thought of ways of fusing the two together so you know for yeah. me I was getting enough of that creative outlet through the weddings yeah uh, and doing other shoots as well like family shoots and commercial shoots yeah um but then I kind of did the fashion for a while alongside so I had a couple of exhibitions so it was a bit more on the artistic side rather than commercial fashion yeah. photography so um, what kind I did, of things were you showcasing in those in those like, displays the exhibitions that you were doing what kind of images so, did you have in there sure so um I would have a concept um a theme uh, I would go and shoot it with a fashion photography angle so for instance I um, did one project which kind of personalized um like Snowdonia and the mountains for me so right. you had these two characters for instance and you had one which was the beauty of the mountains but also you had the other characters a bit darker and a bit more broody um you know a bit more you know kind of dark um, elements in the mountains as well so um I personalized that through using fashion photography so we had outfits we had you know headpieces yeah. um, and then that was then shown in the gallery um so interesting Mm -hmm. how did it come about that you got that you were putting your work in a gallery and did you find that that helped you know um raise your brand you know or connect with potential clients or was it just kind of for the fun and the creativity of it um it was kind of for the fun and creativity to start with so um because I started doing the weddings by this point and family shoots I got a bit overwhelmed with um feelings of not doing work for me I'd been right. working for other people for a long time and pleasing other people which is fine that's my job yes um, but I wanted to do um some creative stuff for me something completely wacky something completely different yes. stick into the fashion photography um and it's you know it was kind of local it was still in North Wales it was a, a gallery in Canavon um and I was approached because I was pushing my work on Facebook and Flickr yes. and everywhere else at that point um, people started to notice my work so um, I was approached to um, do that exhibition and it kind of raised my profile in terms of getting my name out which is great yeah but also being known not just for the weddings but for more artistic stuff as well so having two Help things the going right on kind of clients for you sure, so do you yeah, find absolutely. that you're that your clients really do lo- really understand and connect with the fact that you are a creative artist as well as just a documentary photographer that yes and they I really want so, that yes. side of your work yes I think um you know my my potential clients love my work they yeah. um, know they like this light and airy style yes. um and because there's so many different styles around at the moment as so well uh, it's difficult to pinpoint what you want I guess as a potential client so by being yeah by being very consistent with my work and being very right this is what I'm doing this is what I do this is how I do it um people are very clear on on what I am and what I do yes um and that helps a lot I think um and they know that they're in careful hands in a way because I do pose people to look amazing I do just want people to feel amazing um I don't want people to think, oh gosh, I'm just going to stand in front of the camera and do whatever. You know, yeah. I want them to feel that, oh, how that the director, she, she'll make yeah. us feel good. Yeah. So um, 
it's a nice collaboration at the end of the day you know you're oh, collaborating definitely. with your clients yeah photos that they love <laughs> definitely so do you you know what you're saying about you communicate exactly what it is that you do so your clients know exactly what to expect is that something mm-hmm. that you knew right from the start or is that something that's developed over time through trial and error through bad experiences <laughs> <laughs> basically yes so it's been a very um, long roller coaster um yeah. yeah because to start with I think no photographer can be dead set on what they're doing right from the start I think that it is a process and I think everything's a process yeah I think so many people um think you could just attend a workshop and I'm this photographer now and no it it doesn't work like that you have to you have to go through all these hoops to get to where you are and you learn something new every day and you have to be receptive to that as well you have to be ready to learn yeah um and I'm just one of these people naturally who just wants to learn something new, like every day I'm just like really? full of information. And yeah. um, I want to be able to apply that every time yes. as well. Um, so what are some no, of the things that you feel like you've had to learn along the way? You know, you said about you have to jump through some hoops to get to eventually mm-hmm. where you want to go. Mm-hmm. What, what are the things that come to mind for you that you like? Yeah, that was a defining moment. That was a pivotal moment mm-hmm. like in, mm-hmm. in my well, development first, of my business yeah. style. Sure. It's first is the style definitely uh for years I was doing a mishmash of different things you know yes. there's some dark and moody some light and airy some very colorful yeah. um it was almost um I was editing to suit my mood yeah. <laughs> in a way in that kind of sense and what I fancied doing at that point um but then once I found the style that I actually love yeah. I just consistently kept working to get to a point where I was happy with my images right. um that consistency is definitely a, you know that was a big turning point for me knowing that I need to edit in a certain way to get right. a certain look yeah. um did that and you feel you know, like, as a creative or did you actually quite enjoy it or I enjoyed it yes yeah. absolutely I was so happy to see results and also learning to shoot to be able to get that look as well yeah um so really getting to know my camera getting to know my settings knowing exactly what kind of lighting will render those results for me yes for sure that was, that was um, a hard one for me as well like when mm-hmm. I first started and I kept saying the camera's broken the camera's broken <laughs> about saying no you just need to learn sure. how to use it <laughs> and I le- learning to be aware of what was behind me was a big lesson for me that I'm oh, taking yeah. a picture thinking I've seen pictures like this why doesn't my picture look like the pictures that I've seen and I I hadn't it took me a long time to realize I have to be aware of what's behind me just as much as what's in front of me because that's affecting my picture too big trees or walls you know things that are blocking light or casting colors that was a big learning curve Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for me yeah (laughs) definitely no it, it is and you you just have to keep on shooting and keep on yeah. you know being aware of all this stuff going on so um, true you can't just go into shoots blind and being sort of you know snap 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 no there's a lot of mind work going on beforehand and assessing yeah. everything around you so yeah, you said that sure. you were shooting very creatively and very experimentally and even some dark you know pictures but then mm-hmm. you you said you settled on the style that you like which I assume is the light and bright because that's what you you <laughs> shoot now and that's what you're known for so what mm-hmm. was it about the light and bright style of pictures that you were like that's it that's me that's what connects with my creativity sure um it's for me um weddings are such a beautiful event and for me the light and air brings that beauty about uh in a more ethereal way in a more dreamy way yeah um that's what weddings are to me in my head and you know everybody will have a different perception um I just for me I feel that in 20 30 40 years I want my clients to look back at their photos and not feel that their photos were trendy at the time because you look back at some like 80s images and people go oh my goodness what did I look like I look so awkward and you know obviously fashion changes of course that's natural but I I don't care so much for the fashion it's more um I want them to have this classic look I want them to you know look like a married couple and um in a very clean way a very um elegant way and yeah I just feel that you should be able to remember your hair and makeup and yeah. you know your suits and, and everything like that it's really important to me that those yeah. details are retained 
Yeah. Um, and for me, it's light and airy style that kind of shows it off in a more yes. clear way. Yes. Uh, not bashing on any dark and moody because that's no great. So that's it has its own style. its own beauty and its own elegance. Absolutely. But yeah, like you said, it's just Absolutely. a different focus. It's the focus on it is. the yeah, I like faces, you know, I, I like to see everyone's faces clearly because my pictures are okay. a lot about people's faces and their expressions sure. and laughter particularly. Mm-hmm. And so it needs to be yes. bright. I need to be able to see what's happening on somebody's face. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, I agree. I agree. Makes total sense. So you said that, you know, that then started you down this road of working on light, bright pictures until mm-hmm. you're like, I'm happy with my work. So what is mm-hmm. it that makes you feel happy with a picture? What is it that you're, what elements is it that you're aiming to create in a picture? And when you've got it, you're like, that's it job Ooh, done <laughs> okay so um okay so number one is the subject in my image yeah that they are conveying a feeling to me it can be very happy it can be a bit more serious I don't yeah. mind so much um as long as they look comfortable yes. are very um happy you know very um yeah happy in their uh pose yeah. their expression yeah. Um, so yeah, that's very important to me because that's what you remember. You remember how you felt yeah, through an image. Absolutely. Um, you don't so much, you know, remember, I, I don't want them to remember, oh gosh, Hella told me to put my hand here. You know, I don't want people to remember that. I want people to feel, oh yeah, I'm in this pose and I'm loving it. You know, I want yes. people to feel they're in a Vogue shoot, you know, yes. um, and to feel special, um, so that's the more kind of yeah, the posing stuff. Yes. You know, if they're happy and comfortable, I'm 100% happy. Yes. In terms of technical stuff, um, I love backlighting. Backlighting is my yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. I love shooting in that dreamy light. And if I've got trees kind of diffusing that light nice. as well. Um, or, you know, any buildings maybe diffusing it in the background. Um, and I've got like an even uh, kind of, yeah range I suppose of lighting yeah yes. um, I don't want any contrast I want it all quite yes. soft yes. so I will move to get that uh, yeah. you know, look um do you ever get the uncle it, bobs at a wedding who are saying you yes. shouldn't be shooting into the sun mm-hmm. I get that all the time <laughs> all the time and then they surprise I mean I don't normally show pictures from the back of my camera on a wedding yeah. day but sometimes I just want to go actually <laughs> you know <laughs> take a look at this <laughs> hello <laughs> yeah and they you know they're surprised because they just haven't been yeah. taught to, to do that and yeah you know there are photography rules well rules are meant to be broken yeah just, you know, really experiment and something things, that you know because like you said we're always learning there's always something new to learn and, and I think particularly in the last year or two I've been starting to realize that the backlighting applies even on a cloudy day that there's yes, still totally. a little bit of directional light and I wasn't really okay. aware of that until the last year mm-hmm. or so and I'm starting to realize it more so there's always like when it comes to using light there's always more to learn about how to Absolutely. use it in the way that's going to make those pictures that you want absolutely yes definitely um and I guess another thing that's important for me as well you know talk about backgrounds and and lighting and such I want balance in my images as well so like this is going back to my film studies days I guess right uh you know not just picking any old pretty background you are thinking more about right what shapes are here to frame the image interesting Um, yeah what kind of shapes are we putting the couple in relation yes. to the rest of the image yeah so um you know there's 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 tangents I don't know if yes you know, but yes so I don't know the technical I mean I, I do oh, know yeah. level arts, so I know <laughs> roughly that there are leading lines and so like, you know, I couldn't totally. tell you all the technical words for it all totally <laughs> totally um and because I was aware of those things very early on by now it's almost natural yes but I never have any lines kind of um really close to objects or any yes. lines going through someone's head or something yeah. it has to be very well balanced yeah. um, and also learning from other photographers you know about um you know even more photography theory with um triangles so that you have these angles um yes. balancing things in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an image you know ranging from your detail shots mm. to the couple shots to your group photos yes um to really think about composition in that way and composition is really important to me as well so 
do you find that tiring? Because it sounds like there's a lot of things that you're thinking about when you're making an image, you're juggling all of these different things. Is it, I, I've, I've found it's a bit like driving a car to begin with. When I first started driving a car, I'm thinking, how were you supposed to do all these things together? Like you've got to look in the mirror, then you've got to, like, and you've got the clutch and the pedals and, you know, and this gear stick. And I was thinking it's not possible. But then after a while, it starts to become second nature. Is that the case for you? Are you still consciously Definitely. thinking of all these things? Or is it just quite instinctive? You're just like, oh. yes, no, do you know, and, and you don't, you're not even really thinking why or are you consciously planning right this there that there uh no not I mean most things have become second nature so the composition yeah. of setting people um is quite natural by now yes after so much practice <laughs> that's the thing you practice isn't it <laughs> no one wants to hear you know. that it's about practice you just want to get it right <laughs> no. the time but no you exactly. can't escape it <laughs> um but yeah, there are some things that I still have to think about um I think because the composition comes quite naturally to me anyway um I find that bit quite easy it's maybe more the technical ca- technical camera stuff that I might be thinking more about and knowing yes. exactly right this is what I need to do to get that effect Interesting. um that takes more of my <laughs> brain space on a wedding day ra- rather than the actual composition interesting mm. so what it, what would you say in the last year has been something that you have discovered about getting more of the images that you want be it technical Ooh. or posing or lighting but you're like I found myself starting to do more of that type of thing or I didn't realize that that was a factor or I didn't know how to do that thing or I've been working mm. on it or so I guess one thing um so I do a lot of flat lays on, on ah, a wedding yeah. morning so for the groom and bride so I get all the details together um one, I think that's an important thing to do because uh-huh. the flowers will be dead in a week. So true, it's important to have photos true. of those and all of the bits, your perfume, your jewellery, you know, all the bits. Um, and because I think that's so important, I've spent a lot of time, investing mm-hmm. time in figuring out how to really beautifully set them out, really um, think about the composition of those as well. And that's yeah. been learning curve because I'm, working with static objects Interesting. and yeah. yeah trying to create a beautiful image with just a background <laughs> a very plain yeah. background so that's been one thing that I've been working hard on this last year so interesting it reminds yeah. me back you know in, in, in my art a-, a level days and we they, they would we'd have to create a still life with lots of little things pine cones oh. and leaves and things and then you were given a little viewfinder and you had to move it around <laughs> until you found the view that was like oh that one's a really good combination of that's lines it. and shapes and things mm-hmm. I, I imagine mm-hmm. that's what I picture you in your mind you're just moving these little things around <laughs> going yes that's the one <laughs> totally totally it, it takes it's a lot of patience it's a lot of um you know fiddly bits and, and all yeah. that so that's it, it can take a lot of time and um, but again by practicing and practicing even practicing at home you know with bits of yeah. paper and whatever when I go into a wedding now I'm like right this needs to be this shape this needs to be this shape bah, 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 bah. Yes. and then I kind of have more efficient way of how do you it. this might be a difficult question but how do you trust your instinct with things like that because I if I do things like that I quite often in my mind I picture other photographers that I know are like experts at this like they just mm-hmm. nail it every single time and I'm thinking is this what they would do would they put it here would <laughs> they do this do you know like and, and that stops me from trusting my own instincts so sure, how do you sure. keep your brain clear to just go with your creative instincts without when you're learning something new true I mean I just I kind of just do it I just I just yeah. get on with it and do it because if you overthink about you know overthink it um it's to your own detriment really because you're just going to be like oh gosh this is never going to be great because I'm just going to yeah. be fiddling around forever um you know you just have to be quite um ruthless with it I guess and just go okay. right this this is what I'm doing and this is what this is what Helen's brain is saying yes I'm doing and um I I I tend to have confidence in myself in that way for sure. Yes. I'm happy, you know, if um with flat lays and that kind of thing. I'm quite confident in my styling and you know, I'll mess around with it a few times and tweak yeah. it a few times for sure. Yeah. Um but I think if you do too much then you're just gonna over overthink it and you're just so gonna hate true. anything that you do. Um, so true. So it's creating that boundary, I guess, and just going, yeah. right, no, stop. It's like an artist, isn't it? You could keep on painting a canvas forever. You could be tweaking things forever and ever. It can you know can never end um, yeah, I, I feel like I remember something about that with one of the old the old painters and 
they they stripped back his picture they were restoring it or something and it had like 40 different layers you know he just <laughs> painted it and repainted it and repainted <laughs> it and I, I think that's the life of an artist isn't it you're always absolutely. like absolutely I think absolutely. it could be better I think it could be mm-hmm. better <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like when knowing when to just go it's good enough exactly like, and that that's exactly. really hard for a creative person yes. to go I yes. think that's fine like that's totally <laughs> Thank you, because I'm such a perfectionist as well. I want everything yeah. to be perfect. And, you know, sometimes perfect isn't attainable. You just have to go, so no, actually, this is really very good. It might not be exactly what I had in my mind, yeah. but it's still a good piece of work. And that's when you know to step away from it and just appreciate what you've actually created because you have invested time in it. And um, so true. I think that's one of the things I like about the, the time pressure on a wedding day. I don't have the luxury of being too perfectionist. That's it. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> it's got to just exactly. be a good job. Like, do a good job Absolutely. as best I can. Consistently. And- exactly. And if you learn something from that experience from every wedding, you know, something's bound to, you know, kind of, you know, even, you know, throw me off a little or, yeah. you know, something might not go to plan quite as what I wanted it to be. Yeah. Well, as long as I learn for the next time to know how to avoid that or how to make that True. situation better, um, instead of just ignoring it and carrying on, yeah, really take it on board. And then the next time you'll feel even more confident in your skills and your way of so dealing true. with it. So yeah. true. So what has been one of the highlights of your career so far? When you look oh, back over, you just celebrating five years full time, <laughs> seven years with your business. When you look back, like what are the memories that particularly come to mind? You're like, oh, that was good. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Oh, well, that goodness. Real... Um, there are so many. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, that's really good. <laughs> one highlight for me was um, being able to go over to Italy to shoot for oh. a couple um, who were flying in from Toronto, I believe, in Canada. Oh. And they flew me out to Italy to photograph them for their anniversary. Wow. Their five-year anniversary session. And it was just the most amazing experience. I got to meet these two beautiful, lovely people. Wow. Which is one of the reasons I love this job anyway. The great people I get to meet. So Um, true. You know, we we zoomed around this little smart car, just the three of us. And just the landscapes um, and the photos that I took that, time as well I feel like even now what two or three years later Mm -hmm. I feel it's still some of my best work because I was so at peace with you know with I've reached a point where I was really happy with the way I was dealing with my posing my locations and I thought that was a turning point in a sense I can apply this to anything I do not just to certain people or certain projects um and yeah it's just a really beautiful place and obviously in Italy you know in Tuscany this is so gorgeous as well and I just it just suddenly hit me that wow people do appreciate what I do and do appreciate that you know they found me online they love my work and that's always amazing to hear from anybody you know someone's down the road here you know but when someone from Canada has seen your work and actually flown you out to um somewhere like Italy you just think wow this is you know people value photography yeah. and value what I'm doing and so I true I want to appreciate something that came from my little brain you know yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I remember because really I remember the first destination wedding I did I thought it had all been a horrible misunderstanding I thought <laughs> I thought they thought they were booking someone else <laughs> somebody a lot better than me <laughs> I know and it's that imposter syndrome isn't it coming in again yeah. just going to be, oh why me what why, why yeah. of all the people why do they choose me but um once you're, you kind of get over that it's yeah. kind of wow no I really am doing something special here I really am creating yeah. great work so that I think really that's great. one of the biggest buzzes for me of, of having mm-hmm. my own business you know and for any because I'm a big fan of anyone running their own business you know photography yeah. or not related um uh, it, and I think the thing I love most about it is the creating something from nothing mm-hmm. and people love you and they love it so much they're thanking you for taking their money like, and you're thinking know. do you like that I made that <laughs> from nothing okay and that, that's Absolutely. like that is just a joy <laughs> unparalleled for me like that, I, totally. that somebody appreciates my creativity mm-hmm. so much that they're going to pay me and be like I feel like they got really good value for money and Absolutely. and I just feel like well, that just came out of my brain like do I just <laughs> And it still gives me a buzz now, you know, when people say, Oh gosh, I you know, I really wanted you for my wedding. Wow. Oh, God, really? <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. It's such an honor, isn't it? It's such an it honor. It is, it is, it is. And I appreciate every single person who, you know, you know, even if you haven't worked with them, you know, the people just come up and say, Oh, you're doing a great job. Well, 
thank you that means a lot because yeah. it's a lot of work and it's it's yeah. you know it's your mind is constantly on this job you you don't yes. go to bed at night not thinking about your job and yeah um, to be appreciated goes very very long way yes now that is an interesting question how do you manage your work-life balance oh, how goodness. do you switch your brain off what does it what does a daily routine look like oh, in, in the world of <laughs> Helen Edwin Robert Roberts <laughs> um so I mean I'm not very strict with myself in terms of my work hours or anything I am quite flexible and I kind of enjoy that flexibility as well um you know my computer is always at hand so if I need to do something it's there um, but I do have boundaries you have to have boundaries yeah. you know it's so important to establish those um you know ahead of time um yeah, because this is such a people pleasing job, and you just want to be constantly pleasing people, and and that can be a struggle sometimes, yeah. uh, for sure. Um, so you know, I try to step back sometimes and really take you know a day off and just nice. think, right. No, people can wait; they're not thinking yeah. about photos every day. It's me yeah. who's doing that and we're not worrying yeah. about the work, right? Yeah, and I've learned to you know take a step back, take a day off when I need to don't really schedule it in unless I have an event on yeah um, I was gonna so say I'm how often do you take a day off not that often <laughs> <laughs> um but I do you know, I every year I tend you know I, I go traveling quite a bit so um I'll take a week out or every few years I might yeah. take an extended trip yeah. um that's important just to really like be away yeah. from everything for a while totally. um, so you don't take your camera with you or do you take your camera I when you do go away? take my camera yes yeah. I do but just for your own creativity and your own fun that's it. That's yeah it. um but even though like recently I was in America and I um took lots of landscape photos which is great because there's no people for a change and yeah that was yeah quite refreshing yes um, <laughs> back to your roots uh, you know in the two mountains oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> totally totally and I do love that because that's you know I learned from my dad about all of this so yeah very but, nostalgic for you it then, is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Landscapes and, yeah. Totally. yeah absolutely so um but I did schedule a shoot with a couple while I was there because I thought well I'm in California I need to be shooting wow. something dreamy so even though it wasn't work really it was just yeah. you know meeting these beautiful people and uh, creating a really lovely shape yes. um it was nice to be able to do that and experiment with different lighting different settings yes. again uh, it didn't feel like work so yeah it sounds like for you that's really important to be able to have the freedom to be creative without feeling like it's a job without somebody yes. paying you and there's all the pressures and that totally. you're just free to just go let me try something wild let me just experiment totally. yeah. yes yes and you have to do that because you know with experimenting you can't experiment on a wedding day you can't yeah. go and try something new on someone's wedding day or so you can miss something or you know so true that's why I schedule time to do style shoots and do shoots with just a couple in you know in somewhere yeah and um, that's your chance to experiment that's the time yeah. to do that and then what you learn you apply to your next wedding or project or so how many style shoots do you do do you do a few a year or um yeah so recently I think I've been doing like three or four a year right. which is plenty enough yeah yeah <laughs> um, you don't be doing too many um but I, I love doing them I think it's so great because you're connecting with other suppliers which is my you know kind of number one um kind of incentive as well maybe, because I love working with the people and seeing yeah. creative people mm-hmm. um especially here in North Wales recently there's this great influx of new businesses who are just creating really beautiful work and I want to work with those people because I know right. we've all got the same you know we've got the same values we want yeah. the same thing for our couples yeah um and what's happening now of course is when people book me for a wedding I might have the same cake designer same you know venue styling etc cetera, etc cetera. Yes. and what's nice about that is the clients you know can trust us to create yes. beautiful work and they know that we get along and we have yeah. fun you yeah. know as a group we have fun and I think it's really important so yeah. clients feel in safe hands on their wedding day because you don't want them to be worrying about the florist you don't want them to be yeah. on, worrying where's the photographer gone and all this yeah. they know what they're getting so for you that's actually quite important to have friends within the industry florists and you know who you know that you trust you know you work well together and you work hard to build those relationships absolutely and you know another aspect of this job is the loneliness it's such a lonely job Uh, I do this alone and you know locally there aren't that many photographers really you know um, in North Wales is very you know it's it's 
very rural area. Right. Um, so I kind of have to go further afield to go find those people in a way. Yeah. Um, so but it's so nice that we have this little community um, and I feel that I can, you know, bang on about weddings. I can go on yeah. about any ideas and people are really receptive to it. Yes. Um, whereas, you know, you ask your friends and family, they don't really get the business of what we're doing in a way. Yeah. They don't understand, you know, something that happened at a wedding or, you know, it's, it's yeah. that process. So it's nice to have someone who understands the industry and someone to uh, bounce ideas off of. Definitely. And, so do you, know, like, you, <laughs> do you meet up socially even with, with other yes, people? Yeah, absolutely. that's yeah, so like, nice. You know, a couple with, you know, with a, um, a wedding planner and cake designer oh, and yeah. um, florist. You know, we just go for a cute coffee or lunch. and yeah. It's just nice. I just really love it. And, you know, you're not doing it just for business. It's actually yes. real friendship. And yeah. uh, I think that's just so special to have this little bubble of... Absolutely. Awesome and it keeps your sanity because you've got somebody to, yes, to offload to. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, your creativity is just, you know, I think, you know, two heads are better than one every time. Yeah. So you bring an idea to the table and someone brings something else in and all of a sudden it's this great strong concept or idea yeah. and I really love that interesting bouncing off each other's creativity because mm-hmm. florists sure. and cake makers are usually incredibly creative people and you know I have my favorite florist and I always say she's <laughs> not just a florist she's an artist like yes, her bouquets are something else you know <laughs> and you can tell yeah, for sure when somebody's just oozing creativity and <laughs> they're just choosing to express it in flowers and we're doing it in photography but the creativity is the is the same and that can really inspire yes. each other oh definitely definitely I just love it you know this is so important to have a community of people lift each other up rather than you know having competition and you know I think it's so nice for everybody to be friends and you know have a good time yeah (laughs) I'm not in this job to be competitive I'm in this job to create good work and work with awesome people at the end of the day absolutely yeah that's one of the reasons that I love I love working in the wedding industry so I used to be a singer for many years I was a full-time singer yeah and toured with big artists and sang in in arenas and and all kinds of places but it was an incredibly competitive environment the music industry you had to be prepared to fight your way to the top treading on everyone else as you went and that's just not me and I was part of a vintage harmony group and I would let the other girls go and get their hair and makeup done first and my boss was like no SJ no you've got to push your way to the front and I'm like I genuinely don't mind going last I mean we're all gonna get our hair and makeup done I don't mind if I'm last you know someone's got to be last (laughs) and I just thought oh this is not for me like Mm -hmm. I don't fit Mm -hmm. in here I just want to get on with everyone (laughs) oh yeah oh I'm totally the same totally the same want everybody to be friends and yeah have a good time <laughs> I and I definitely get you know because th- this is the first time we were actually speaking you know well face to face for those who are listening yes. to the podcast there is yeah. also a video version of this over on YouTube <laughs> if you want to come and see Helen's beautiful face and her <laughs> envious curls every, oh, gosh. <laughs> every girl wants to tell you her like <laughs> Helen um, but I've definitely noticed that from you on um on the Love Like Facebook group because that's where we've uh, we've really talked and connected and you're yes. always so warm and so friendly oh. to people and so encouraging and you're a real community builder and oh, I really you, appreciate you. that about you and that so that really comes across just your love for people and I oh, think definitely. that's how you then create the pictures that you do where people are so comfortable in their own mm-hmm. skin mm-hmm. because Absolutely. you make them feel amazing just by oh. being you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you no I thrive off of people I yeah. love spending time with people I speak a lot you know I just talk 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 and uh, <laughs> I just love it <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I genuinely love most, getting to know people. What do I make the most of talking a lot? I know, I'll start a podcast and then I just get to talk. <laughs> Good plan. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> um, yeah, like I just, I think, you know, so many people um, can talk, but it's empty words maybe. And I just want to genuinely get to know people. And it yeah. is absolutely genuine that I am interested in them. And I'm not really interested about talking about myself, really, in a way. You know, I yeah. just want to get to know people and you know, I just love knowing about their travels I, yeah. and, and getting ideas for next travels and um, places to eat and I just genuinely enjoy those interactions and yeah. uh, and applying that to the wedding industry I want to know you know what makes other people um, inspired any mm. new ideas or and I want to be supportive as well because yeah. I've been in this industry for a while now and I feel that yeah, I do have some experience that I can pass on to other people and young photographers as well yeah 
and I'm more than open to doing that I'm an open book yeah. I don't want to be kind of no this is what I'm doing and you're not allowed to see it you know I, I really yeah. want people to see what I do not not apply it to what they're doing so much maybe but using it as inspiration to you know find their voice to see what they want to um to do in in, in their discipline so um I love that so that that brings us nicely on to your workshop so this will be your first <laughs> workshop that you co-workshop uh, that you co-host next year yes, so what, yes. Well, how did that come about and what is the vision with the workshop what are you hoping that people will go away having received from your workshop sure so um I was collaborating with a local photographer and um we both just want to be sharing really the um the business side of um weddings because I think so many people miss out on that and start people focus so much on getting the nice pictures there's also this whole other you know pool of stuff that's the yeah. business side and it's I think it's important to to communicate to know your value yeah. um that you don't underprice yourself these kind of things yeah. we were both on the same page myself and Derry the other photographer and um we just wanted to share that of course and also the creative stuff so knowing how to pose how to do flat lays I'll do like a mini yeah. course on flat lays nice and yeah and we'll talk about the technical stuff and everything and it's just to give people a step up I guess for yeah. them to not be lost in this kind of um abyss of not knowing what to do next with their yeah, business yeah. um just to get ideas from established photographers who kind of know what they're doing yeah and giving them a platform to learn more and uh yeah just really push themselves uh, and to have tangible things to take back home with them as well not just the look this is style shoot you shoot it like what we do no I yes. want them to really learn about what they want to do and how they want to convey it in a photograph so good. um so really we're really focusing on you know the education part for sure yes really educating um rather than just giving them a, a portfolio shoot and that's it you know yes um, yes yeah. so that's the hope. kind of idea yeah it's <laughs> so good that sounds amazing mm -hmm. and it's going to be incredible in wales you've just got the most amazing so yeah amazing so, backdrops there nice you've lived in wales your whole life have you i have yeah yeah so i have yeah, yeah, I love you it. grew up in a little village only a few minutes away and so you've yeah. kind of been in the same area yeah totally oh, yeah i went to high school here in the town um yeah. all my friends still live around here um it's nice but it's also you know close enough so i can go over the border to cheshire and shropshire right. um yeah. it's not you know wales is a very small country anyway um but then i also have beautiful areas like anglesey then down nice. to, the, to mid wales so it's, yeah. it's i'm in a really great location really i'm only like an hour and a half away from liverpool right so yeah, yeah so you know i'm not completely in the oh, sticks but and liverpool's got my favorite wedding venue of all time so oh, Sefton Sefton Park. Park, Palm oh my goodness that. me it, too for those yeah. of you who don't know Sefton Park <laughs> has got this old victorian well i i call it an orangery but it's not really i mean it's just an, an indoor jungle i don't know it's just a massive <laughs> victorian glass house that's just full of palm trees and I've, I photographed the wedding there. I felt like I was abroad. No, I was <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I it's so nice and warm inside those tropical plants. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And I photographed there in August and it was a, it was a heat wave. Yeah, and same. Was, me like, too. Was, did you? Yeah, it was absolutely hot. They had... Um, they use their order of service as fans, which is kind of cute. They did put little lollipop sticks on them to I mean, that's keep what they them do cool. Abroad. I mean, who needs to go abroad? Just go to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I fully, I highly recommend uh, the Palm House. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so good. Like my, my dad was actually born in Wales. He oh, was wow. born. He was born in Potheli. Oh right, so that's you not know, far from me, really. Yeah, I was in Yeah, yeah it's, I was near there yesterday, actually. Um, oh, it's really? about an hour away from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so interesting. Yeah, oh. so he, he, they moved away when he was twelve, and his voice broke, and he lost his 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 Welsh accent, oh. and he's grieved it ever <laughs> since. Every time he hears one. a Welsh accent, he goes, "Oh, I used to have one of those. <laughs> I love the Welsh accents." <laughs> It's so great. Oh, so we we used to holiday in Wales every two years. We'd go to oh, Abersoch, which is sweet. right on the right on the peninsula, and we yes, loved yes. it. Beautiful. Oh, it you could go out into water that was twice your depth and still see the ripples of the sand under the water. Like 
Amazing, so I'm very envious of you living oh. in that very beautiful part of our island. <laughs> well, you're welcome to Bawa anytime. It's a Thank bit you. Day and that's generally the weather here. <laughs> but, Great, um, I'll be down. Anytime. I'll be down next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> amazing well thank you so much Helen for joining us where can people go to get information about your workshop or will that be coming out later next year that will be coming up we're hoping to get some stuff out before Christmas so um yeah just getting everything designed and, and search and getting logos you know that kind of thing sorted um, amazing but yeah we'll get that up as soon as and brilliant yeah. so in yeah. in the love light Facebook group we will post details of Helen's workshop um, and links to her Instagram and her website so that you can get in touch with her if you like she's an absolute treasure you've just oh, you're such a precious person <laughs> Helen you've got such a heart for people and that really comes across and really enjoyed chatting to you thank you so much for your time if you enjoyed today's episode you can find more interviews tips and inspiration in the Love Light Fine Art community on Facebook you can also follow along with each new episode on the Love Light YouTube podcast and Instagram and don't forget to visit www.sarahjaneethan.co.uk forward slash love light for information on training real life wedding workshops and online courses to develop your own fine art photography and connect with more of the clients you love.